Now this is very interesting. The, I like the 1508 definition of competence because I think this is pretty good. It says all persons involved in any overall electronic, electrical, programmable electronic system or software life cycle activity including activities for verification, management of functional safety and functional safety assessment shall have the appropriate competence i.e. training, technical knowledge, experience and qualifications relevant to the specific duties that they have to perform. That's not a bad definition. That's pretty good. Now interestingly when you come to 1511, the old 1511 just said persons, departments or organizations involved in CIS safety life cycle activities shall be competent to carry out the activities for which they are accountable. Big whoop. What does that mean? That's open to all sorts of interpretation. So what they did is they modified it in the 2016 edition because it now says requires a list of specific items to be addressed and documented when considering the competency of those involved in safety life cycle activities. And then a procedure must be in place to manage the competency of those involved in the SIS safety life cycle and periodic competency assessments are also now required. So again, that nice word, periodic. So you can determine how often are we going to do these competency assessments. Is it once a year? Is it once every two years? Is it every six months? Doesn't matter. You define that period, but you must define that period. <clears throat> because again, this will be one of our leading indicators. If we're not doing these periodic assessments according to what we've defined as being the period, then of course we run the risk of potential systematic issues creeping in because people don't know what they're doing and are not properly competent to do it. So this brings us to the question of certificate or certification. So basically a certificate is you do a course you get examined or tested on the details of that course and you get a certificate. For example, you, if you did a bachelor's degree, you studied for three years or four years, you took an exam based upon what you'd studied, you end up with a certificate. That's a once and done. Once you've done your bachelor's, you don't do another bachelor's. Certification, on the other hand, is more than just that. Certification requires ongoing evidence of maintaining your level of competency and knowledge. So for example with our CFSE program, Certified Functional Safety Expert, you have to have at least 10 years of experience. You can get credit for three years if you have a degree. You have to generate or submit a case study around a project you worked on, a safety project excuse me, safety project you worked on. You then have to take a six hour exam, which is based upon case study material and developing and answering the case study material, as well as multiple choice exam. And then if you pass, you get your CFSE. And then every three years, you have to resubmit and you can do that up to three times. So basically you've got nine years and at the end of the nine years if you want to maintain your CFSE you have to redo another exam. Why? Because, well, ten years, things change. Industry moves on. Technology moves on. So you, that's a certification. And there are different programs out there. A lot of the um, programs are certificates. So again, this is the once and done. And then the CFSE and the CFSP is a certification. So it means that you have to demonstrate ongoing compliance. So the idea was, <coughs> back in I think 2005, Exeter was approached to come up with a program to help educate people. And Bill, to his credit, has always been 
an advocator of education, to make sure people understand that that way we'll make the place, the world a safer place. And that's why we do a lot of free um, educating, the, the webinars, for example, the papers, things like that. So the idea was to improve skills formally and establish the competency of the individuals. So we have the CFSE board. Now the interesting thing is, and this is something that's worth noting, is there's independence. So we operate this program per IEC 17024. The way I like to, to characterize it simply is the separation of church from state. So I teach this course. I do not set any exam questions for CFSE or CFSP, although I could. And I'm not involved in any of the marking. And when you take the exam, there's no name involved. You have a number. So that number goes on to the examination paper. So the, even the assessors have no idea whose paper they're assessing. They just see a number, a candidate number. So there's no bias. The other thing the CFSE does is it has a four eyes policy. So in other words, one grader, he will go through the paper and he will score it. Then it will go to a second grader to see if the scores are the same. And if there's a difference, there will be a review and it may go to a third grader. So it's, it's handled independently. So I always tell my students, if you're going to take the CFSC or CFSP, please let me know how you do because I have, will have no idea whether you pass or fail. I won't get told. I never, I never find out. So that's certification, 17024. Now, with this course, at the end of this course, you can take a one-hour examination. If you pass it, and it basically it's a 20 question, multiple choice, you have to get 16 out of 20 or 80% to pass. If you pass, you get a certificate. The certificate will be the Functional Safety Practitioner Certificate that basically says you understand well enough the concepts of this course to be able to pass this exam. And for that, I do write some of the questions, and normally when I'm doing it in person, I will mark the exams at the end of the, of the examination period, and then tell the students how they got on. So I, that I can do, because it's a certificate, it's not a certification. So that's why the CFSE is, is held as, as really the gold standard in the industry in terms of, of competency, because there's a 65% pass rate. So in other words, for every 100 people that take the exam, 65 will pass, 35 will not. And it's a, a, a strong test of your knowledge, because it's not easy to pass that exam. And it, and it shouldn't be, because we're looking for expertise in this field. And with the CFSE, it, is based upon your knowledge and your experience as well as understanding the standard. So with the CFSE and the CFSP, there's more emphasis on understanding the standard and how to apply the standard. <clears throat> with the FSP, it's based upon what we cover in these four days. So there you are. CFSE and CFSP are part of the certification program. The FSP is a certificate. So you get that certificate if you pass the exam. And again, it's, it's up to you. If you want to take the exam at the end of these four days, that's fine. You can take the exam. And I believe it will be online. So you'll be able, you'll get a link. Tatana will send you a link. You'll then have 60 minutes from when you start to do it. And then it will tell you straight away whether you've passed or failed. And then what we usually do um, is we will then have a review of the, the papers. So if, if any of you don't pass or want to know why you got certain questions wrong, then Jatana usually sets up um, a conference with me or whoever the instructor is to go through it with you. <coughs> 
So here are the requirements. As I said, um, for F FSP, you don't really need any experience. You can, you can do it straight away. For the CFSP, it's a two-year requirement, but if you've got a degree, then you're fine. You can do it. And the, it's only a four-hour exam, which consists of short answer questions and multiple choice. And then the CFSC, of course, is the expert. And it's important to make sure that you, you understand when you go in for these exams that you have copies of the standard, that you've read correctly the information that you need to submit and need to uh, bring with you. I remember I was teaching, <coughs> a few years ago, I was teaching in Colorado and we didn't have anyone to invigilate the exam, so I ended up doing it. And I had one person from my class was doing the CFSP and a guy was coming in specifically to do the CFSE. So he turns up to do the CFSE exam with nothing. He doesn't have a copy of the standard, either 1508 or 1511. And I said to him, well, did you not see the email that told you what you needed to bring? He said, oh, well, he said, I've been doing this for 25 years. I either know it or I don't. And I said, well, OK, but it, the, it's a tough test. It'll be on the standard. And I actually had a copy of 1511, which I lent him. I didn't have 08. So the CFSE and the CFSP start together, and they're the four hours in the morning, and then the the afternoon is for the E for the two, for the multiple choice. So we're, we're starting off, we're two hours into the, the morning exam and this guy doing the CFSE comes up, hands me his paper in. I said, are you sure you want to hand this in? Don't you want to spend a bit more time? You've got another two hours. He said, no, I'm not going to change my answers. That's it. I said, okay, then what do you want to do? Do you want to, because you've got two hours, do you want to do the multiple choice? Or do you want to wait? I'll do it now, he said. Okay, so I gave him the multiple choice. Hour later, he comes up with a multiple choice. I said, again, you, you've got two hours. Are you sure? I'm not going to change my mind, he said. I'm, well, do you think he passed? No. He crashed and burned big time. He was so angry, he wrote a letter to the CFSC board complaining that how the devil could we fail him when he'd been doing in this industry for 25 years He'd been doing all these PHAs and all these lopers and blah, blah, blah. So Bill said, all right, uh, he would assess the guy's paper and give him a report on his paper, which he did. And we never heard from the guy again. Because obviously, even if you've been doing something for 25 years, doesn't necessarily mean you know what you're doing. And this is part of the problem with the competency. The other thing you can do is different types of exams. So you can do the process safety exam. Now here again, I always advise people, when you're filling in your application to do the CFSC or the CFSP, you need to specify which exam you want to do. If you don't specify, then it will default to the process exam. And I had one of my guys one time wanted to sit and do the machine safety, but he didn't specify that. So you ended up having to sit the process safety. So if you want to do specifically machine safety, automotive safety, then there's the 08 hardware development, there's the 08 software development, and of course then there's the CACE. So you can specify when you do your application what particular type of exam you want to do.